This video is titled, Woe to Those Who Call Good Evil and Evil Good. Coming back and trying to do a few videos again now. My voice is getting a little better. I'm still not near where I need to be at, but I'm <laughs> running low on videos. The Holy Spirit's given me so many titles. i got to knock some more out. So with his blessing and his strength, here we go. I'm not even talking about non-Christians here. I'm talking about people calling themselves Christians who call good evil and evil good. It runs rampant in the world today, especially in my country, Senerica, that I live in, formerly America. I don't see, I've been around most of the rest of the world in my days in the military, but I don't travel very much anymore, so I don't know what's going on at this moment, but I know in my country, it runs rampant. You've got Christians that, you got tons of Christians now that are supporting homosexuality. They're saying, oh, well, you know, Paul, kid, um, you really shouldn't say anything bad about about gay people and about lesbians and and about transsexuals and about you know all these different transvestites and people because God tells us not to judge. Um, these people are going to go in the rapture too, Paul kid. Uh, you just don't know any better. These people are all going to be raptured. All they have to do is just ask Jesus to forgive their sins and He'll take all of the the gay people in the rapture. You know, just save it for somebody else. People that come to me with that kind of heresy and lies and false doctrine, they're coming to the wrong person because I, you know, you can sell it, but I'm not buying. I know the Bible very, 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 very well. You're not going to fool me. You're not going to fool seasoned Christians who have read the Bible many, many times, understand what it says, and especially who see through Holy Spirit vision. We, we don't see through, you know, the eyes of the heretics and the false prophets and you know, the liars and the people who tell half-truths, we see through Holy Spirit vision. And homosexuality is an abhorrence to God, okay? Here's a little Bible 101 for you, Christians. What is the one sin that God hated enough that he destroyed an entire civilization down to the insects? And you can't find nothing today. All you can find is some uh, some brimstone buried down in the sand which would have been you know equivalent to the thousands of years when it happened which proves it happened Sodom and Gomorrah and what was the problem there the big problem homosexuality so you can say what you want to say Christians you can go ahead and say that you can believe the false grace lies and the once saved always saved lies and I'm just getting so sick and tired of once saved always saved it's spreading like a cancer all throughout this world somebody shared a video today about this distinguished pastor, or older gentleman, probably in his 60s, who has a real popular show. I can't remember his name, but someone sent him a letter of rebuke because he had mentioned once saved, always saved is true. And this guy just says, well, let me let me pick a random verse out of the Bible. Or just a random verse out of the Bible. Like he just pulled this out of thin air. Of course, he's in Second Thessalonians, and he's trying to twist around and turn around, you know, the whole grace and works thing. Save it for somebody else. Like I said, you can you might be selling, but Paul Kidd's not buying. And I'm going to teach the 100% biblical truth on this channel like I always do. So forget it. Homosexuals are going to the pit of hell. No homosexuals will be allowed to step one foot into heaven. I don't care if they've been saved for 80 years, if they've won a million people to Christ. If they're gay, they are not going to heaven. Okay? If they're gay and they repent and of their of their backslidden state and, and sh shun the gayness and don't do it, they can go to heaven then, but they're not going to heaven's gays. I'm sorry, Jack Kelly, Mr. Heretic, and all the rest of you who says that gays are going to heaven. Uh -uh, not happening. You're out of your minds. And you should be ashamed of yourself for calling God a liar in the Holy Bible, a book of lies, by saying they will go. That's just one topic. We got off of gays. Where else should we go now? Let's look at, uh, let's see. Well, let's just let's let's just look at at any sin. Basically, we can say let's say somebody is a uh, is hooked on pornography. Let's say someone is a Christian who's a porno addict, and let's say that they spend all their time surfing the net, looking at porno sites with all kinds of sick sexual stuff and and child sex and, and animal sex and everything else. And let's say they're just typing away on their computer and doing this night and day, and and you know they might even be doing this kind of stuff, you know, on the side in real life. They might be married or not married. If they're married, they're in adultery. 
and all kinds of other perversions, depending on what they're doing. If they're not married, they're fornicating because you can't have sex outside the marriage bed. But according to the majority of Christians that you'll talk to in, in Seneca today, oh no, these people are all going to heaven as long as they've been saved. They'll tell you, well, Paul, kid, this person might be a porno addict and he might be he might be on the most filthy porno site in the world and just sharing sharing downloads of of of, of sexually explicit photos of little kids and stuff. And if the rapture happens, he'll go right up in the rapture with everybody else. <laughs> Baloney, man. Save it for somebody else, please. I, I, I'm full of holy discontent and righteous anger when I hear this nonsense. The Holy Bible is specific. No sexual impure will go to heaven, period. That's it. If you don't repent of those sins and iniquities after being saved, you're not going to heaven. And people just look at me like I'm crazy. They look at me and say, well, um, Joseph Prince told me that uh, if you tell me that kind of stuff, Paul Kidd, take that and just throw it out, take that word and throw it out the window. Just take, this is what he really says. This is what he, what, he, doesn't, he doesn't say these words. This is what he means though. Uh, Joseph Prince told me to take the Holy Bible and throw it out the window and say the word of God is the book of lies. That's what Joseph Prince is saying when he's telling you to take the word that I give you from the Holy Bible to try to save your soul and keep, keep you from riding the 666 Express on the fast track straight down to hell. And the Hellfire Inn has got permanent reservations for you down there. The bellhop's going to check you in and you're good. That's where I'm, ta that's where I'm talking about. That's where I'm coming from. And I even have them tell me Get this. I, I've talked about it, I think, in one other video, but get this. I've had him tell me, the Holy Spirit, I asked the Holy Spirit, he gave me a vision to fight once saved, always saved, about all this sin getting into heaven. And he's, you know, people calling good evil and evil good. And he said, the Holy Spirit said, well, share, share this with them, Paul. Give this to them. They got to be, if they can't see this, they won't see anything. <clears throat> so as always, I listened to the Holy Spirit. He told me to run this scenario by all the people who are cheap grace, once saved, always saved, people who call evil good, okay? I asked him, I said, so let's say if I know a Christian, they've been saved 20 or 30 years, but they've been baptized, they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, they volunteer in church all the time, they're a devout Bible reader, prayer warrior, they, they do everything a Christian's supposed to do, they tithe. I said, but 20 or 30 years down the road, they say, well, you know, I'm tired of being a Christian, they're sucked in by the world and they become a Satan worshiper. Okay, they're a Satanist now. I said, I asked him, will this person go to heaven? Oh yeah, he will. He will. Come on! How in the world can you say that? What's wrong with you? People have got to be out of their minds, man. To say a Satan worshiper is going to be in the presence of God. The, Satan has got their mind so screwed on so tight, they can't see the truth anymore. They're looking at blinders. Holy Spirit vision does not, does not exist for them. They've got blinders on and they've got scales on their eyes. I just can't believe it. I said, you guys have got to be out of your minds. So people like that, you have to shake the dust off your feet and just move on because you're not going to be able to reach them. Shake it off your feet and move on. It's so sad, but that's just a few examples. You don't have much time on YouTube, so i got to keep it kind of short. That, <clears throat> that's examples of calling evil good. But calling good evil, there's also a lot of Christians who say people like me are evil. People that speak the word of God, 100% uncut, that preach it the way that God wrote it with his own hand. They call us evil. They're saying good is evil. They're saying the word of God is evil and God himself is evil. Now, they'll come up and say, oh, no, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, Paul Kidd. Uh, I never said God was evil. I never said the Holy Bible was evil. Don't put words in my mouth. No. <laughs> Let's rewind it. You put the words in your own mouth by saying that what I tell you is evil because I try to rebuke, correct, and teach you to take you away from once saved, always saved, from the prosperity doctrine, all these lies. So you're the one who's calling good evil. It's, it's just, it's just, it's incredible. It amazes me. It dumbfounds me. These people just wonder why, they wonder why in the world I try just, I just try to grab them. I'd like to just grab them and shake them and say, look, man, the rapture is imminent any second of any day. Or don't you have any fear for your eternal soul? Don't you care you're going to hell? They don't care. And, but you know what, though? I'm going to keep pounding and pounding and pounding. And if they just shut me off or threaten me and get crazy and start showing, you know, their little G-God, Satan's way, I'll set a relationship with them as far as trying to show them anymore. I'll still pray for them every day. I'll still pray that God would open their eyes 
before they wake up in hell one day. But that's all I can do, my friends. That's all any of us can do. <clears throat> Christians that are going to call good evil and evil good, all we can do is just rebuke, correct, and teach to where the Bible says. This is not judging, by the way. Don't say, oh, you're, you're judging me. I'm rebuking, correcting, and teaching you the way the Bible says to do. I'm trying to help you to get you away from the pit of hell, to get you to start understanding that evil is evil and good is good. Don't flip-flop it, man. Don't let Satan take control of you and mess with your life and, t and, and tell you all this jive and just get you all messed up. You just don't do that. Stay strong in Jesus Christ. Fall on your knees and repent. Say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins and iniquities, my sin patterns, and restore me back into a covenant relationship with you. Please bring the Holy Spirit back into my heart. Because he's going to move out, my friends. If you've got a sin-ridden soul, the Holy Spirit's going to pack his suitcase and leave until you get right with the Lord again. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ died for our sins, past, present only. If we sin after being saved, there's hundreds of scripture in the Bible that say otherwise, that you will not go to heaven with unrepented sin after being saved. Google this name, Dan Corner, D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R, -E then O-S-A-S, -S, or once saved, always saved. Click, and you do that, it's the best resource in the world that 100% refutes once saved, always saved. Throws that out the window. Biblical truth, can't dispute it. If you don't agree with it, you're calling God a liar in the Holy Bible, Book of Lies. Let's start calling good, good. Let's start calling evil, evil. And let's start siding with God because God says we can only serve one master, either God or Satan. That's it, no fence riding. Let's choose God, shun Satan, rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Let's get right with the Lord right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thanks for giving me a chance to be back here putting some videos out for your glory. It's all you, Heavenly Father. And I pray that people, that Christians would wake up. Jesus, and stop this nonsense of calling evil good and good evil. Just stop it. Why can't Christians just read the Holy Bible? It's written so plain. It's written so plain. God wrote it so we could understand it. But he wrote it so we could read it with Holy Spirit vision. Not through, you know, heretic vision or through false prophecy vision or through backsl backslidden vision. Okay. Holy Spirit vision. There's no time anymore to play games. We have to get serious for Jesus Christ. There's no time to mess around. It's time to do the right thing, get close to you, Jesus, and just get out and reap the harvest. Just live our lives in a way that would please you and just shun evil and just do what you want us to do. Time's short. We need to be serious for you, Jesus. Convict us. Prick our hearts and bring us back on the right path. In precious name I ask it. Amen. As always, my friends, if you're watching this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know that I've sinned and I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth and died on the cross for my sins. I believe on the third day you're risen again, went back to the right-hand side of the Father to prepare a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Please come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it, amen. And if you pray this prayer, my friends, Jesus says with his own words in the Holy Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. If you'd like me to pray this prayer with you, send me an inbox or a private message. I'd love to pray with you. you. You can call me. I do it on Facebook. I do it here. If you have a neighbor, friend, or loved one who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, you have a sick friend, neighbor, relative, if you have a sick pet, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothing, water, whatever you need, I prayed for and received a gift of faith, my friends. I have mustard seed faith. Nothing I did. Oh, God. And when I pray, I pray believing in my heart, speak with my mouth, knowing that God will answer all of my prayers. I believe 100%. I know he'll answer them. He's done it countless times. He'll do it for you, too. Test his word. and never returns empty. I know how busy we are these days. And thanks for taking time to watch this video. But please share it. <clears throat> share any of my videos. Share my link to my channel. It's a witnessing tool to back up what you witness to family, friends, neighbors, loved ones co-workers, strangers, drop it in a blog somewhere online and just plant a seed and walk away and let God make it germinate. It's never for anything for me, never for my glory, all for the glory of God. I'm just his slave, his foot servant. I deflect all glory back to Jesus Christ. The people need to hear the, the word of God to be saved, to repent of sins and iniquities, to get off the sidelines, help reap the harvest. They need to be blessed and have miracles happen in their lives to just <laughs> save them. Thanks again, everybody, and I pray for you every day, and I love you, and I pray that God bless you. Good night.